if you have an interest in horses and love learning more about horses, the horse industry, teaching, or even managing your own horse business, then you're in the right place. We would love you to join us on our mission, which is to improve the lives of horses around the world through the education of riders, handlers, and trainers. So get comfortable, listen in, and enjoy. This is another of our popular Listener's Choice interviews, which we're playing over the weekend. We've chosen the most popular interviews for you to select the Listener's Choice winner. If you're not sure how the Listener's Choice competition works, have a look at horsechats.com slash choice for the rules and the leaderboard. Horse welfare and safety are of utmost importance where humans have any interaction with horses. Within the courses at International Horse College, we only utilise methods that promote safe and humane ways of interaction between horses and humans. We only support safe methods of educating riders, handlers and trainers about horse welfare. Internationalhorsecollege.com Registered Training Organisation 31352 Our guest today is Durrani Cumming. Durrani is a vaulting coach who started a journey doing classical dressage, eventing, show jumping, and then really went into vaulting to do some cross training and now uses natural horsemanship to help train her lunging and vaulting horses. How are you, Durrani? Very well, thanks, Grandma. Good, good. Durrani, I'm sure we're going to have an interesting talk today. I think you've sort of started off, you've done a lot with Nuno Olivero, first of all, who was an absolute master of horsemanship, and Ramon Guerrero. So I'm sure that you're going to talk a little bit about how you're using the information that you've learned from, the lessons you've learned from them to help you as a vaulting coach. Yeah, definitely. But before we start that, have you got a favourite quote for us or something that you use as an inspirational quote? Yes, I do, Glennis. Um, I can't actually remember where I saw this. I think it might have been on Facebook or, you know, one of those things. But when I saw it, it just leapt out at me and it just said, yes, that's what my whole life with horses is about. And it goes like this. It says, true horsemanship is when your horse trusts you more than their own instincts. Yes. And that really spoke to me um, about the relationship that you need to have with your horse, particularly for Mm, mm, uh, high-performance things, especially when you're lunging a a vaulting horse at a very, very high level in a very, you know, important competition. So, Yes, because I'm sure with lots of crowds, you know, horses, I mean, their, their instincts are really saying, get away from those crowds, get away from all this noise, get away from everything. And they've got yeah. to trust us. They've got to trust us in so many different ways. You know, we're going to put them into a little tiny box that makes funny noises and you go in in one place and you come out of a completely different place. You know, there's trust in yeah. so many things that we do with them. Yeah, yeah. And when you truly when you truly understand the instincts of the horse and, you know, truly understand what they are, mm. you think about, wow, how do they actually trust me enough to cope with all this? Yeah. Tell us about your first memory with horses, Durrani. You know, first time you ever remember being with a horse, whether you were riding it or near it or whatever. Do you have a memory or something yeah. like that? Yeah, well, I guess I could say I was very, very blessed, very lucky um, as a child that both my mum and my dad were horse people Mm -hmm. and had had horses since they were young and their mums and dads had as well. So my mum was a great horsewoman. She spent a lot of time um, mustering and riding on a farm, but she also did shows and had show horses, you know, back then. (laughs) Um, And she bought me a little Welsh mountain pony called Pebbles and we kept it down the road at the local showgrounds and she would take me down there two or three times a week when I was about three or four years old and just put a little saddle on and lead me around with this little pony. And I remember, you know, having such fond memories and saying to my mum, are we going to Pebbles? Are we going to Pebbles today? Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. What about having going on and you sort of went through a bit of a stage where you were riding, you know, you were like a... Yeah, what do you call it, a show rider, a demonstration rider, a performance rider? Tell us a bit about that and how you got that job. Yeah, after after my, you know, very, very young experience, um, my mum and my dad and my brother and I were very involved in show riding. Mm-hmm. So we had ponies and galloways and, um, you know, as we 
got older, we had, um, that was back in the days of 10 stone, 12 stone, yes. 14 stone hacks. Yep. And uh, we even, you know, had some experiences where we bought racehorses off the track um, and trained them to be hacks. So that was sort of when all my experience in training with horses really started. Okay. And, but then how, how did you actually go to work in a performance stable? Yeah, I guess my my mum and dad would probably say she ran away to the circus. <laughs> um, when I graduated school, I just decided that uh, I wanted to apply for a job as a senior rider at Andalusia Park on the mm-hmm. Gold Coast, and I lived on the Gold Coast, and uh, I got the job as a senior rider. So I spent, uh, I think it was about four years there, yes. and yes. I never realised what that experience was going to bring to the rest of my life because I, and I didn't realise at the time, I was working with trainers like Nina Oliveira, the Portuguese master, um, and all the Spanish trainers that would come out to help us train the horses. As a senior rider, I got to train my own colt, you know, from scratch yep. and um, with the help of the of the trainers, the Spanish trainers, and Nuno came out twice a year. And I remember my first experience with Nuno where um, we had to do a vaulting program uh, to be allowed to ride the stallions. And he put us through this rigorous, um, it was mainly basic seat on on a vaulting horse, on a circle, but uh, we weren't allowed to sit on a stallion until we could go walk, trot, canter, walk without hanging on with anything. Okay. So we just had to sit bareback on this horse on a circle and we had to be able to do that. We weren't allowed to grip with our legs. We weren't allowed to hang on to handles. We just had to be with the horse. Yes. And I remember that was just the life-changing thing for me. Yeah, yeah. So your eventing and show jumping, that was before you were working with Nuno? Yes, that mm. would have been uh, my show riding and then doing dressage and a little bit of eventing probably through Pony Club and show jumping through Pony Club, yeah. Okay. Now, I'm sure it's everyone's dream to just go and become a senior rider somewhere at, you know, Andalusia Park. But what sort of core skills and character traits would they need to to get a job there, you know, to say I, I plan to be – and even if they didn't have the riding skills but they had the goals to improve their riding skills to become a senior rider. What character traits and core skills would they need? Yeah, we we did have, you know, we had, uh, I was lucky that I was in the first lot of interviews, so I went straight into the senior riding. But even even when we were first interviewed, we had a rigorous, you know, time with Nuno. Um, I think it was, you know, we worked six days a week. Mm-hmm. Um, we all had to, we had two horses that we had to look after fully ourselves. So we um, cleaned their stables, groomed them, rode them, exercised them, um, prepared them for the show uh, and any of the younger riders coming through they they were trained the same way and um, you know everyone worked their way up the the senior riders helped with the younger riders um, and they started off on the experienced horses and then worked they, their way up into being allowed to train uh, a colt a young horse um, but yeah I, I guess just a, a love where you were really where you were really committed to doing this and also keeping a really open mind and asking lots of questions um never being too proud to ask questions and change the way you were doing it try different things Mm -hmm. um i think it's very humbling that sort of thing training a horse and and working your way through that is very humbling yeah i was going to say what's the best thing about it you know you say it's humbling what what do you think is the best thing about being in the industry working with horses working with some pretty special horses yeah I think it's the relationship that you build with the horse and I think sometimes the horses teach you more about yourself than you're actually teaching them yeah I think that's the humbling side of it um and it's about it's about having a conversation with them yeah. You and I love the way horses can give you that feedback. Um, as long as you're open to it, you know, you've got to keep a really open mind. Yes. Yes. Yeah. All right. Now you've talked about Nuno. You talked about Ramon. Who else has influenced you? Your parents. My parents definitely. Uh, in you know, in the very early stages, uh, my parents have always supported me with everything that 
um, I've done with horses. And, and now I find myself the same parent to my daughter. Yes. Who um, became a, a um, top level high performance vaulter and competed in world championships overseas. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, that sort of being able to be there with her and for her, I learned so much. Um, but I also think most recently um, I've worked with some natural horsemen, um, Ken Faulkner, for example. Yes. Whenever we get a new vaulting horse or a new horse, we go along to his clinics and we find that the way um, he communicates with the horses, it relates to on the ground and then onto their back. And it didn't conflict with anything that I had um, been taught by Nuno or Ramon or um, Jose Mendez or any of the Spanish trainers that I'd worked with. Okay. Okay. What about horses? If you've got a particular horse or, you know, you've talked about your first pebbles, was it? Your first horse? Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's, there's been so many and they've all been, you know, I was thinking about this, they've all been so significant. And I've learnt something from each one. Um, I guess the the one I've got now, my um, high performance vaulting horse, Ludo, he's um, teaching me a lot, and uh, he's learning a lot as well. Um, but there was a horse, a show horse that I had called Midshipman, and he was a Galloway, and I he I learnt so much from him. He was the sort of little horse that if he got a fright or he didn't like the look of something. He would just grab the bit and bolt. <laughs> and if you touched his mouth, he would go faster. Mm-hmm. And you, you know, you wouldn't be seen for dust. So I actually learned to train my brain that when he got a fright, I had to be calm. Yep. And that's something. That's a skill that has stood by me for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. And I can thank Mitty for that. And that's teaching you something about yourself as well, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I still remember um, the work I had. I was um, in the uh, running for champion Galloway at Brisbane Exhibition and uh, he was going really well and then in the middle of my workout and there was, you know, other horses that were waiting to work out, they landed a parachute with green oh, no. in the middle of the arena. I thought you were going to say the trot started or something. You know, they started the race. No, a parachute oh, no. with green smoke. Wow. And I saw it coming and I just had to tell myself, okay, he's going to see it, he's going to jump, but don't grow his mouth. Just mm-hmm. breathe out and relax and just go with him. And he actually canted on the spot for about three strides and then he came straight back into his workout. And I wow. was just, it was probably my proudest moment. <laughs> wow. wow. He ended up getting reserve champion instead of champion because they, he did that in his workout. <laughs> and I was just like, I didn't care. I was just so proud of how he'd handled it. So, yeah. That was going to be the next question, your proudest moment, but you just talked about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Thinking about, you know, because your daughter's done quite well as an FEI vaulting rider, what's the biggest challenge that the vaulting riders have to get to that level? Hmm. In Australia, it is really difficult to get good horses. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a lot of really, um, really talented vaulters out there but it's trying to get that consistency of being able to train on that horse and get to know that horse. And it's it's really important that you, you're able to get to know the movement and get to move with the horse and be in harmony with the horse. And then I think the greatest challenge for them when they go overseas is that we can't take our horses with us. Mm. So my daughter, when she was competing at World Championship, had three weeks to get used to the horse. Yeah. Um, And she was also competing in a junior squad of Australian vaulters and they had like three weeks to get used to that horse as well. So she was trying to get used to two different horses. And, yeah, I I think it it, like you're competing against Europeans and they have been training on that same, on the same horse for like 12 months or more. Yes. And so when you run in, you are at a disadvantage right from the start. Mm -hmm. But. You know, the Australian vaulters, they have such guts and, uh, yeah, they overcome that and do some amazing things. Yeah. So. Yep. Just thinking about a general horsemanship point of view, 
What's a common fault that you see with could be riders or handlers or trainers? Something that um, that you've seen that you think could be fixed, and because I'm going to ask you how to fix it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I just think that. Well, my, my what I've learnt over the years is yes. that there is a quick, quick fix. Mm-hmm. That horsemanship is something that takes years and years of experience and and working with the horse to really understand them. Um, and through my experience with bolting, I've realised even more so from what Nuno taught us that it's all about harmony with the horse and working with that horse. And I think any any technique that forces the horse to do something, um, I don't believe is in the best interest of the rider or the horse. Yes. And, like, you're asking your horse to do different things, but I believe in the method where you open the gate that you want them to go through and then you gently close the other gates. And the horse is making that choice to to yeah. do that. And that's just – and that's very much so in vaulting as well because the whole essence of every move you do when you're vaulting is harmony with the horse. If the vaulter doesn't move with the horse, then the vaulter falls off because they're not hanging on with anything. Yes. So, yes. Yeah. And I just think a good seat, a good balanced seat, and really focusing on being in harmony with that horse, not interfering too much with their natural movement, is the essence of everything we should be doing with our horses. Okay. Okay. And that's something that you would obviously recommend to young vaulting riders, you know, people that are coming mm. into vaulting, that's what you say to them, yeah. Yeah, well, I've I've found that vaulting is an amazing cross training for mm. and foundation training for the other disciplines. Are you teaching riders from other disciplines now, or you've just seen it used in other disciplines? Yeah, um, it is starting to become a little bit more. There's a lot more interest in that now with mm-hmm. the vaulting. And vaulting's always been looked at as oh, it's a, a high performance sport or a performance sport, but um, even overseas and and that's what Nuno did with all of the senior riders at Andalusia Park you had to do it go through a vaulting program first Mm. and at the Vienna School of Riding they start off on the lunge bareback on the lunge yes and it's the way they develop their riding to be balanced and stable a stable seat and to be able to have an independent seat yeah and in all the riding schools overseas and particularly in Germany that's why vaulting is so big in Germany is that it's used as a foundation training for riding yeah, yeah. All right. I think that's good. I think you've um, you've certainly explained that well, and you've talked about it, and you've talked to it. Just say something too about the natural horsemanship, because you were saying about the term you were using, the term, or they were using. Nuno was using the term natural horsemanship when he did work in hand with the stallions and with the horses at Andalusia Park. Yeah, I, I guess because nat- the the term natural horsemanship is. You know, it's a, it's a more modern term now. When I was working with Nuno, it was just, it was horsemanship. Mm, and okay. all the techniques that you see now in natural horsemanship, which I think is great and people are starting to recognise it now as a way to communicate with the horse, um, I saw used as, you know, that was how Nuno worked with horses. Mm-hmm. So I can relate to it all. Yep, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, now, Dorani, have you got a book that you could recommend to our listeners, something that you think would complement their training? Um, yeah, um, I'm reading one at the moment uh, called The Power of Horses to Heal, Riding Home by Tim Hayes. Okay. And I'm really enjoying it because he's talking a lot about the relationship between humans and horses. And uh, I am actually have done a little bit of work with kids with complex trauma Mm-hmm. and the natural horsemanship, just working with horses and doing a vaulting program with them. And I've seen just amazing transformations through that. So reading this book by Tim Hayes, it's really given me a lot of inspiration and confidence in what I'm already doing with the horses and the children. Yeah, yeah. I'm still reading it, but I'm finding it just, yeah, it's really everything in there I, I can sort of really relate to okay. in my journey. Yep, no? yep, yep. I'm also at the moment helping yes. Ramon Guerrero write his book. Oh, good. Yep. And that's really been 
a really wonderful journey for me because um, Ramon and I have worked together uh, for the past like five or six years with my horses. Yes. And now he's starting to put it all together, all that experience that we've had and that he's had training other horses as well. Yeah. He goes back to Spain every year and has experiences over there. And, uh, yeah, we're putting it all together into a book. When's the book out? Well, oh, we're still working on it. Yeah, okay, <laughs> so no, no date be. yet. Mm. No, within the next 12 months. Okay, we'll have to get you to come back and talk and maybe get them on, uh, on as well just to talk about the book and let us give us some more details about it. It would be good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that would be great. Yeah. Okay. Apart from the book, because you've talked about that, what else are you looking forward to over the next 12 months, two years? Yeah, um, I'm really hoping to expand um, my learning and my work with um, young people with complex trauma. Mm -hmm. Um, For the last few years, I've been working at the Carbrook Animal Assisted Learning Centre just near Brisbane. Um, It's all animals, but particularly with the horses. And we've been running a vaulting program and we've been running a just a in, interactive um, working around horses um, and using horses like like therapy for these kids. Yeah. And um, I'm just learning new things every day and I'm really enjoying the reward that's involved in helping these kids. How did you get involved with them? Was it through the vaulting? Yes, in a way. They were looking for someone that had a few horses that we did some activities with these kids. Yep. Yeah. And uh, I I just started with basic beginner vaulting. I was running holiday programs basically for um, kids with disabilities mm-hmm. mainly. Yep. And uh, my girlfriend that um, has a couple of horses with me, um, she is a physiotherapist and she did hippotherapy. Okay. okay. And I was a hippotherapy horse handler. So we started doing stuff together that way with the Riding for Disabled. Okay. That's interesting as well. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we should probably get you back and talk about the um, hypotherapy. Yes, that's another amazing thing that horses can um, really bring to, to humans. Yeah. yeah. Rani, in a few sentences, if you could summarise your philosophy with horses into a lesson today, or into a message for our listeners, that would be great. Hmm. Um, there's there's a little a little saying that I have with the children or the young people that I work with, and it's called KFC. And I always go KFC, not greasy chicken. <laughs> it stands for kind, firm, and confident. Yeah. And what the horse wants from you is to be a good leader, someone that's trustworthy, someone that's honest, and someone that's consistent. And if you're always listening and understanding and communicating clearly that will help your relationship with the horse and also it's very humbling for you because you learn a lot. Yeah, yeah. All right. Durani, how can people contact you? What's the best way? Uh, Yeah, we have an email uh, for our vaulting club called Ella Springs. So at ellasprings777 at gmail.com. And then for the Carbrook Animal Assisted Learning Centre, we have a website. That's equinelearning.org.au. All right, and those details also will be on horsechats.com slash Durrani coming or else go to horsechats.com, search for Durrani or search for coming. Durrani, thank you for talking to us today. I'm, I'm actually looking forward to talking to you again about the hippotherapy. I think, you know, just all the tips and all the, you know, coming from a slightly different angle from other vaulting coaches and a slightly different background as well from other vaulting yeah. coaches. I don't think there would be too many that can say that, um, you know, you got introduced by Nuno probably, but, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think that's that's really good and it's great that you're learning the, the horsemanship and it sort of carried you right through and you're able now to give back to, um, to some people who can really benefit from it. So thanks for chatting to us today and hopefully we'll talk to you again sometime soon. I'd love that. Thanks, Glennis. Thank you. Bye. Bye. If you've enjoyed this chat, then please comment, rate and subscribe. If you'd like any changes or recommendations for guests, then please contact us through horsechats.com. And while you're online, have a look at the government accredited courses at internationalhorsecollege.com. Registered Training Organisation 31352.
Remember that our comments and instructions are general in nature and do not take into consideration your individual horses or your individual ability and circumstances. If you enjoyed this podcast, then please leave your comment below.